Uh, welcome. This is the Flotilla Friday call for June 11th, 2021, and we're talking about mapping uh, the organizations around around us somehow. Uh, so there you go. Vincent, you were just talking about, um, uh, it seems like all maps end up having a center. Yeah, so I think it would be interesting to discuss what um, what is going to be the center for the map that we're making today, uh, like who's or what perspective is it from and, and who is it, who is the intended audience for the map? Um, and then um, also which software or set of software should we use to actually do the mapping? Like what are the types of um, ways that we want to be able to interact with it? Um, yeah. Those questions would determine which software we use. So like, do you want to, is it, are we making a map big enough where you need to like filter? Or uh, are we making a map where um, we want to be able to make it collaboratively editable. So like all those things would, would probably change what tool we use. Um, and I was saying we could use something like Airtable to put the data into to then send it to lots of different tools because Airtable makes it easy to just like rearrange the rows or like change formatting because all these different tools typically have a, a database for edges and a database for nodes. But what's different is the order of the fields and and usually like the um, the discriminators like some use commas, some use lines, some use semicolons. And so Airtable makes it pretty easy to make a formula to like change the um, to change that so it fits with the different platforms, um, in my experience, at least. Um, that sounds awesome. I think uh, you also mentioned uh, earlier. Um, uh, privacy, you know, how, how public, how private uh, is the map. So you asked an interesting question, uh, which, um, uh, which for me, I, I wouldn't make, I wouldn't, I actually just wouldn't have one map. Uh, what I would want is a system where uh, you can recenter the map um, and, and uh, different people have different viewpoints. Um, there's actually a visualization called a uh, hyperbolic tree um, where you can drag the you know, you, you recenter it, and then the the tree kind of goes out from there and gets smaller and smaller. Um, so, in, in my in my imagination, if we don't have the massively cool 3D, you know, uh, Star Trek Minority Report, you know, fuzzy fuzzy uh, volumes, the next best thing kind of maybe is a hyperbolic view where you can spin the the view around. So, so maybe in, in the air table or something like that, you could have another table that, you know, here's, here's my view and here are the, the records that, you know, the 100 or 200 records that I care about out of the 1,000 or 2,000 uh, in the space. Um, Vincent just dropped an air table link in, in the chat. And maybe I'll just try going to that and sharing. Uh, Vincent's in the car for 20 minutes or so, and then he'll be on a computer. Great. Um, I have this new thing with uh, uh, with Zoom chat. If I just try to click the link, it doesn't work. But then if you try to cut and copy the link, it or copy and paste the link, it, it does click it or something like that. Um, so Vincent has shared an air table that looks like this. By the way, there's also a, a HackMD doc that I started with a bunch of stuff too. Um, uh, so he's got nodes and edges and edge types. That's kind of cool. And node types. That's kind of cool. I actually, this, I, this is a different way of approaching kind of mapping. A, a lot of times people start with the, the visual of the map. And then, um, so let me show you a different, a different kind of map. Um, uh, I pulled out an old and, and friendly tool that I love. Um, and this is a map just of mostly of massive new intelligence project. I haven't started working in the sovereigns yet. Um, but uh, a lot of times you start a map um, and you just start with nodes and then you start drawing lines. So I like the idea of 
and and then you go okay well i guess my nodes need to need to have metadata or something like that um but um vincent's Airtable has kind of already started doing that uh with edge types and node types it's got you so and i like so he's he's made something that's kind of massively interoperable already because it's just the data to, to make a nice map. So then he's already got some stuff working that exports to Graph Commons or or Kumu or Miro or whatever. I don't think he's got all those connections yet, but it's it's easy to do from Airtable. So this is actually pretty clever. Yeah, and just and just to add to uh, to that. So right now there's a list of communities which is actually a synced Airtable base. It's so it's syncing from the communities directory that, that I've already put together. And so um, if you add OGM or um, Catalyst or Kiko Lab as a, a node, it'll pull the image, the description, and the information from the data that I already have. Um, and if anyone else has other databases already, we can also pull, uh, we could add a synced, uh, a synced um, um, Airtable, or, or we could sync the data into that base. So that way we don't have to like re-enter a bunch of information that's already entered, but then on top of it, you could add a new, so we could add flotilla or we could add a factor, which might not be in the database already. Um, and then start to add that information in there. But I figured, yeah, like set it up so that we can um, kind of plug into the existing data sets to not like spend a lot of time just re-entering the same, like six or seven fields. Um, I really like that, and um, uh, what I would like to do is is to make this one aggregator of many. So at least for some of these organizations, I would like to have them start to put the information that's in their row in in Trove, um, also in a JSON, you know, JSON file or a YAML file on on a website, um, either theirs or somebody else's so that um, we can build a, an ecosystem of aggregators and you know information distributors basically kind of kind of what that's kind of the vision of um, uh, murmurations so vincent asked a really interesting question if we were if we were drawing a map and here's this is another database um, <laughs> uh, it's <laughs> it's a tiny baby database compared to to Vincent's uh, beautiful and wonderful trove thing, but um, it, it's another way of kind of representing information, right? Um, uh, and then actually maybe real quick, the metadata thing I'm talking about, uh, this, is, uh, this is an old thing called microformats, but you can see um, uh, microformats came up with a, a, a nice schema for representing things like uh, people and organizations and events and resumes and uh, I think th even things like recipes and stuff like that. So um, there's already been some work on kind of a uh, you know the data the data schema for this that we can refer to as well, um, along with murmurations, murmurations working on a schema of schemas kind of. Um, so what do we think about centers of, of a map? Um, would we want a map with one center? Would we want a map with this multi-centric that you can drag the, the, you can click a node and then that's the center? I like the idea of the second one. Yeah. Especially it would be on a blackboard size screen. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to say, Vincent? Um, I think it would, for me, I think what is, it seems like the trade off is um, how can we have multiple different maps, but not have to just <laughs> re enter the same information in each one of those? Um, so, I, yeah, I think we should have multiple different maps from different perspectives. Um, but make it easy to like reuse the same um, nodes, even if the relationships are different and the, the perspective is different. And I think we should start with one. Um, I think so. The the easy to reuse the same nodes. Another another similar thing is uh, the information for a node. 
uh, is always up to date. Yes. Uh, so I know Trove, Trove is good at this, um, but it's a centralized way to do it. Everybody would could go log in and update their themselves probably. Um, another way to do this is to pull the information out of you know the the web um, aggregate stuff out of the web and everybody keeps their own thing their own entry up to date and then the aggregator pulls it together and i think we'll you do i that, think we'll do both yeah you, you kind of need both because some people won't have the facilities to yep. post their own stuff um which which actually kind of uh another implication of that is that you'd want trove to be able to be a host for um, information that people want to syndicate. Yeah. So there, there would be a, a, you know, a data endpoint as well as the, the pretty endpoint. Yeah. So the, the one thing that um, I had started to do um, kind of like an, an API sync where um, Bentley, I think in the game B call you had mentioned, you, you were looking at the kind of like communities graph uh, around mm -hmm. game B and um, asked like, oh, how do we, how do we update this? So that map, that's like right now, that, that's a static map. What I've been experimenting with is like, if you change the relationships, like which communities is your community connected to in Trove, then having that hit the API for like Humu or Graph Commons or whatever graph software and automatically sync and update. So you have like an up-to-date map. But what was really difficult about that was um, I realized, wait a minute, each, <laughs> each community is gonna have their own perspective of the map. So then you need to dynamically generate a new map with each community at the center um, and then be able to keep it synced. Um, and, and so that was, yeah, more, more of a technical challenge that I'm kind of in the middle of, but that's kind of, yeah, I was hoping to be able to dynamically generate those maps and keep them up to date by people just changing their image or description or related communities in Trove. Um, and then I think the broader initiative of mapping, yeah, should also include the kind of murmuration style. How do we also pull in data that's from people who are not on Trove uh, would be would be ideal to, to combine both of those. But yeah, trying to make it really easy because like most people don't that I talk to when I show them like the <laughs> the database behind Kumu, it's not very intuitive. So trying to like abstract and make the the connections like really intuitive um, is is something that you know with that process you can actually do. Yeah, and uh, just. Quickly, it, there might be um, some other tools other than Kumu, because you're not using the full Kumu feature set to have the, the views dynamically generated directly off the data um, without too much development. But so, so that might be yeah. like Graph Commons, right? Graph Commons actually is, uh, yeah, you can, you can do a post request to create a new map, and then you could do. <laughs> Um, you can do get or uh, put requests to get information or to update the map when a change is made. Um, so that's, but yeah, I think um, that's probably going to be a few weeks down the road to like get it to actually like sync really well and to think about like user permissions and who can edit this and um, and the privacy and, and all that stuff is is the main the main kind of considerations that have been holding me back from. Uh, moving forward with that, but Graph Commons is one tool that will allow that. I'm sure there's plenty others. Um, the thing I don't like about Graph Commons is uh, the mobile view isn't great. Kumu has a much better mobile um, interface. Could end up doing both, right? And and the Kumu one gets regenerated once in a while, like every day or something. And the Graph Commons one is fairly up to date. I was just thinking there's just some visualizers that you just point to the data um, so you don't have to sync. Say that again? Just a, you know, a, a visualizer. I mean, a, you know, take a couple of hours to whip something up in D3JS, I think, unless there's yeah. features that I'm not aware of. So, you know, a couple hours of the dev time and then 
you're secure, you know, you don't have to worry about syncing data and keeping things up to date. Unless there's a lot of additional features. I don't know if we're getting too technical. But. Um, we're, we're talking a lot about technical, but there's a lot of technical <laughs> stuff in this too. Um, uh, Vincent, I wonder, so you've got, um, you've got a database of nodes already, nodes and edges already. How, how many entries is that roughly? So um, in terms of the edges, I have a database of edge types, which is um, incomplete and open to change. That one isn't synced. I just actually copied and pasted it, but it's a start of the database of like, what are the relationship types between two organizations? Um, and basically in terms of the actual, um, in terms of the actual edges, right now the way that i've been doing it is just like uh one relationship so it's just like this group is related to this group so i actually don't have any information on the relationship between groups like the edge type because i felt like that's not something i could do alone like i'm not i'm not who am i to say the relationship between ogm and kiko lab or game b and together tech um and and maybe <laughs> ogm and kiko lab doesn't even know that relationship so i think that's what we need to figure out together is like the the edge yeah the edge types and and what are yeah. the actual relations because i have only took it to the point of like these are related i th i think another and just looking through edge by the way folks um uh, nodes are like a name or an organization or an individual, and then edges is a, a technical term that graph scientists use for the link. So when we say edge, we really mean link. Um, the line. <clears throat> the line, yeah. Uh, these lines. Um, uh, so looking at these these edge types, the one of the things that right away it jumps out at me. There's you know there's going to be like many edge types between you know, organizations. So you almost want to have the visualizer be able to filter. You say, I, I, you know, I, I want the ones that, um, you know, have an informal relationship or a formal relationship or owner of or beneficiary of or something like that. So um, I, I would imagine there's, you know, potentially dozens of link types, edge types between any two sovereigns or organizations. And, and some of those, I mean, and whenever you're looking at a visualization, you know, one or two of those is super important to you and the rest of them are noise. So you don't want to draw, draw all of them all the time. Um, the, the reason I, I asked for kind of how many nodes you have maybe, Vincent, is um, uh, I, I wonder if we need to start thinking about filtering already or... Um, or maybe a different way to think about it is uh, if you pick a center to visualize from and you just visualize out, you know, one or two, um, one or two links. Maybe that's a different way to filter and that would be fine. Um, Vincent, one of your, one of your calls to actions for this call was how soon could we get something you know, how, how soon could we do something? Basically, I think it was what, what it was. It's like, why don't we just do it? <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think by the end of the call, we should have a map. What do you guys think? Uh, it sounds aggressive to me, but. <laughs> uh, a basic map and we could always scrap it. Um, I, the, the part that sounds aggressive to me is the visualization part um picking a visualizer and then actually you know running it i guess hooking up hooking up some data to some visualizer um judy you've got your hand up i just had a question you know as a neophyte non-user at this point but in terms of utility how responsive would this be to a search a different approaches to search of you know you could search by entity clearly but can you search by activity type or specific relationships or how, what is the ability to search something like this? Uh, if you were using Trove as the underlying. Uh, do you want to hang out out here? It seems pretty nice, it's cool. And then um, I'm going to open up inside. Um, Trove has really good search. Uh, so you could, 
you know, you could use Trove to do a, a, a good search. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, Jay. So if, yeah, I I put in, if I put in a keyword phrase, would it pull up multiple sovereigns that deploy that keyword phrase in their diagram? There's, there's an interesting kind of question there. Um, so I think one of the things we're looking for is a visualization, like kind of like this. Um, right. And then if I'm, if I, if I search for something, I don't like you, you wouldn't necessarily have all the links. Um, you could throw up um, all those, all the organizations that map match that search. And then you could click on one and go to a map from there, all of the things that's connected to it. But, okay. um, but if you just search and get, you know, hundred results, they may or may not be connected. And I'm not sure that we'd want to try to visualize that. I'm not sure that it's particularly interesting. Okay. No, I'm just. There's, there's a different thing, um, which is, um, you know, show me, um, uh, show me all the organizations that are related to uh, food systems, or actually, you know, starting starting at a, at a sovereign, starting at Factor. Um, who are the the organizations that are related to who are working on food versus who who are working on um, education or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. That that's a good a, a, a graph a filter you know, a filter visual, a filter of the visualization would be cool. Okay. That's what I was asking about is if I, yeah. if I wanted to get a sense of everybody who was working on K-8 education on sustainability, <laughs> yep. then that might be too many code words to search, but if it could simplify down to a simpler diagram that says, um, here are the 20 people that are coming up for doing that. <laughs> A lot of that you just get out of a, um, Vincent, I'm going to your link. I don't know if that's useful or not. Um, uh, yeah, maybe go to the map view. Uh, for a lot of what you're asking for, Judy, the, the, just the, the search results, you know, a list of, of things is good. Um, okay. I've, I've got another thing too. Uh, so my, my, my inclination is that um, uh, I would want to go to an expert in a particular domain. So if I needed uh, you know, educational resources in Nigeria or something like that, um, I would go to the either the Nigeria expert or the educational resources expert, or maybe, you know, both or something. Perfect. Like that. That's, that answers my question, Pete. I just wanted to know as a as someone who's a user, not a developer, yep. you know, does it have the capacity to do these things easily? And it does. So that's exciting. Um, and Vincent, this is a Kumu visualization. Yes. So this is Kumu. And if we import the data into the like Airtable, we can, we can have this level of like functionality. So um, on the left, there's different filters. So you can filter by the um, location, category, type, and, and those fields obviously could be changed. Um, and then Kumu also lets you filter by the, um, lets you cluster them as well. So you can change the way that the information is shown. So on the top right corner, you could say like connected communities, and then it shows the relationships between those communities. Um, or you can do it by location and it'll show you how those are connected to different locations. Um, and then you can hide and show certain element types. So like if you uncheck um, network on the left, then it'll, it'll hide all the networks and it'll just show the communities and the locations. Um, and then there's a search in the top left, which you can search. Um, I think that's by any name of a, of a group. Um, so th that's some of the kind of, yeah. Controls yeah. It. 
And then if you hover over any one of those tags, it should show you all the different groups that are also related to those tags. Um, like if you click on any one of the nodes, Kumu pops up like a little graph on the side. The one on the left um, here? Yes. Um, I don't think I didn't put any tags, so maybe try OGM. Yeah, so if you hover over like sense making, it um it'll kind of gray out and it'll show all the all the different communities that have that as an overlapping topic. Yep. This is really awesome, Vincent, as always. Um I and so my my um so you've you've all heard this kind of a, a couple times. My uh, it, it, so uh, even even I I feel a little bit overwhelmed <clears throat> by trying to figure out how to map what I what I want to what I want to find right. So I kind of want um, to go to somebody who's good at driving around a map, and then I want to either have them. Uh, do kind of the Jerry thing, you know, Open Global Minds is connected to, you know, blah, 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 and connected to, and, and have them drive around the map and show me, um, you know, some paths that I might be interested in, um, or be able to kind of scroll around and, you know, uh, give me, you know, give me a, a 10,000 foot tour of, um, you know, food or education or something like that. And then, oh, can we zoom in on that part? So I kind of wonder if, I feel like um, a lot of the the uses that we have for um, graph ma uh, graph diagrams, um, or or what we end up using them for, is it's almost just an attractive picture rather than a useful navigation tool. Because it's hard to have map literacy, and especially map literacy over a data you know a reasonably sized data set. And I feel like you want to pay somebody to, you know, record the two minute tour through part of the map um, and then be able to replay that. Or uh, you want to be able to pay somebody to take a couple snapshots of, of almost, almost the way that you would, um, like if, almost with a geographical map, right? Um, uh, if, if I wasn't, if, if Google Maps wasn't as easy to use as it is, you know, um, and it was a, some fancy GIS system, the kind that we used to use 20 years ago. <clears throat> kind of like, hey, dude, I, I just need, um, you know, I just need the two miles around my neighborhood and I need these kind of roads lit up. Can you make a map for me like that instead of me learning how to be a map literate, if that makes sense? Um, so Vincent, you're so far ahead of, of everything. Um, <laughs> it looks like you're already done. Uh, what do we do from here? Well, this this is the so this is the catalyst centric map. Um, Fair enough. And so this is from my view, <laughs> from my mast. Um, and so um, obviously, like, I, I, yeah, I've, I've done this enough to kind of to know if you say this is the functionality we want, then I could say, okay, this is the way that we should probably structure the data to make that happen. Um, but so yeah, I think we need to decide on what we want, what map we want to create from what perspective and what are the, the capabilities. And then we work backwards from that and say, okay, let's pick a tool and let's you know, spend 25 minutes collaboratively adding in data and talking about the relationships and um, and and just play around until we get something. I mean, that that seems to me like probably the best way to learn and also um, be able to, to actually have something that we can then look at and be like, okay, how would we do this differently next time? Um, and we were talking about this meeting, maybe like just making a prototype map and then um, maybe the next next week um, inviting in a bigger audience and, and potentially uh, doing it over or, or seeing if we could just get more more eyes on it. I, I like that a lot. And 
um, we kind of listed out some possible needs here, potential needs. Um, so I like the idea of making a map today just to make a map. Uh, and kind of the where, where I want to end up is um, uh, having having it having the having the having a map that's able to uh uh to have multiple viewpoints um so i guess i guess where i want to is if we make a map today it would be cool if if we could if people could make a lot of those maps whatever however they wanted right um and for me it would actually be totally fine if it was um you know i want to drop uh three dollars in the slot and get a picture of this part of the map or ten dollars in the slot and get a video two minute video of you know and um uh so it, you know I, i'd like a two minute video of the neighborhood around massive uh, human intelligence that's related to you know europe or something like that or food or um uh other thoughts and, and let's vector towards actually just making a map the way Vincent said, but. Just yeah, I mean, oh, sorry, Michael, go ahead. You go, Phil. I was just gonna say quickly, I think that makes sense that to be able to change the perspective of the map based on who's viewing it or what the interest is. So I'm in support of that, that notion. I was also gonna mention no. It just seemed like it was a way to, uh, to input nodes and see a sort of overall view of nodes because we each bring different nodes that are further outside, you know, any existing map, yeah. but some of which may connect to each other. Um, and, um, you know, it's, it's just an easy kind of low low skill way to start and for for everybody to participate is to be adding adding nodes that they're or or finding in some um list nodes that making sure that nodes that they're connected to or their organization are just connected to are on there yep uh, so that's kind of like as as a map viewer i want to turn into a map participant a map collaborator And, and another question is um, that is is a, a little bit vexing, but it seems like it would be useful. Is um, entities that are just I, I I didn't look I didn't see every node on that map or every node on on the list that that you were sharing, but um, do we include um, nodes that are individuals and then when individuals are associated with organizations how do they appear together um because i think some of those um, relationships with individuals are important and useful for mapping but maybe we should leave individuals off i don't know I, it, it's um it's uh, i think it's it it introduces a bunch of challenges um i think it's super important information um but right away one of the things i know about adding individuals to um, organizations is that there are the definitely public um, uh, individuals uh, and then there are people who are okay if they're public but maybe they're not the the core you know public people for an organization and then there's private people for an organization and then those categories change depending on who it is right if it's a partner you know maybe a partner can see everybody in the organization um, if it's not a partner maybe they can only see the public people and the semi-public people. Gets challenging um, and drives right into that privacy thing. And and it's it even gets it, it gets hard to understand because like, you know, I, I know of I know an organization and then maybe I know everybody, but I don't really understand what they think is public and private, right? So here I here I go adding to a map and I'm, I may you know I may tell the world more than they wanted 
the you know, the world to know. I, I mean, I, I was thinking really. I mean, the the problems come around um, with, with the relationships between organizations and individuals that are internal. But I was thinking more about not wanting to leave off the map um, individuals who are active. Yeah. Um, but, you know, let's you know somebody who is a who is a lone actor essentially or yeah. an academic who's doing a lot of work on something yeah. who we want to know that you know factor and massive wiki and you know yep. kiko Lab and trove all have relationships to or two of them do but two of them don't and should you know that kind of yep um i got that quite that exact question um this week from bill anderson um, who's like, so I'm an individual, so I see all these pictures of, of sovereigns going around, <laughs> you know, where's me? <laughs> so yeah, that's a, a, a really good point. Vincent, do you have, are you, are you set up and you want to show stuff or help us map or? Um, yeah, actually, ironically, I'm taking today's flotilla call on a boat. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep my video off because the bandwidth is pretty low, but as you can see, I'm not lying. So there's the top of my mask. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can screen share. Um, I started doing a basically, uh, let's see. So just to show you guys an example of like how for the non-technical folks who haven't mapped before, um, so basically this, okay. So in the Airtable, I basically rearranged the fields, which Airtable makes it pretty easy to just um, drag and move things around so that you could basically just copy the edges out of here and then paste it into this um, Google Sheets template. Um, and so this is right now, I was experimenting with the template for the first time yesterday. Um, but so for the edges, um, it has from type, I think I deleted the ones I should have deleted. Okay. So yeah, the edges has from type, from name, then the relationship between the one that you're going from to the one that you're going to, and then to type and to name. And so I made it where it's just really easy to copy and paste, or you could import right into here. So it's like, you know, from type network name OGM is related to mutual aid group Kiko Lab. And then you can also put like a weight, which is like the thickness of the line. And then for the nodes, you their template is um, node type, and then a name, a description, an image, um, reference is a website. And then you could add as many other fields on top of that as you want. So anything past the fifth field is optional. So um, like, for example, we could have a um, like subtype or we could have a uh, location. Um, and I'll probably just clear all of this. Um, and so if we basically go to the air table and then just rearrange the nodes so we have the um the type the type the name the community description an image a website and then topic copy that and paste it into here uh then this graph should This is how most of these softwares work, where you could just kind of like um, copy the link and then it'll sync from a Google Sheet. So Kumu syncs from a Google Sheet. Graph Commons, you could either uh, have it sync from like the API or from a Google Sheet. But so if I just import this Google Sheet, um, and hit continue, now we have a start of a map. So we have Flotilla, Kiko Lab, OGM, Trove, Catalyst. Um, and so you can either, we could, we could actually, we can edit this in the interface here if you just wanna say like new node um, and we can create 
um, factor, actually this is no type. So platform factor, um, and then we could draw connections between factor and OGM, or we can do it in the spreadsheet and then import it after. And do you have two ways yet? Can you go from Graph Commons to, or, or do they have, I guess? Can you export the? Yeah, so you could look at the data here. And then I haven't actually exported from Graph Commons yet, but I'm sure you can. Um, yeah, you can you can export it as a CSV or JSON. Yep. Very cool. Yeah, it probably, I mean, it, it, we'll have merging issues if we try to do both ways at the same time. Um, yeah. But so yeah, I would suggest either. We can pick I, one or the other, yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's pick one or the other to, to do. So maybe back to your, your kind of your starting questions. Um, who who would use this and what, what would they use it for? Um, I, a suggestion because we're on a flotilla call, maybe maybe it's the view from flotilla. Uh, or if we can think of a good guinea pig. Um, does somebody have a map that they've wanted for a while? So map of all the the entities that are working in uh, responsible tech um, collaborative space that don't know each other. <laughs> some, some of them know each other, but I'm clicking. That, that would be a great map. Um, and I, I wonder if we have enough uh, people on the call to, to I, I think that's a great map, right? So I uh, C CTA isn't in my list of sovereigns, and then I don't know if it's in Trove yet, but that's an example of something where, you know, I should know more about CTA and who they're connected with probably, and I don't, and you probably know that. So that might be a good exercise kind of going through, you know, collaborative mapping. Here's some things that I know about, and here's some things, you know, we, uh, you know about, and That's a great we, example. Yeah. So, Michael, what's what's the the headline for that one again? Um, I mean, it could be as small as um, I suppose collaborative ethical collaborative tech, um, but you know, could get as large as something that included. Um, the Center for Humane Technology and EFF and, you know, Mozilla Foundation and the Digital Standard, you know. Why, why don't we start that map kind of around there and, and see where we get to. So ethical, ethical, what was the starter of that? Um, ethical tech, plat collaborative ethical tech platforms and organizations. So what's the acronym C E T P N P? Um you an acronym that was ETA, is there an ethical tech association or something like that? Associations. Is what we're mapping. Uh, Vincent, I, I think I would pick, um, it's probably going to be easier for everybody to, to draw on the map or draw on the graph comments rather than trying to think through the, the data. Yeah, I mean, what does everyone else uh, think? And we can I mean, also have 
one person's screen share and an input in and, and just kind of like um, almost be described for the mapping that happens via the conversation. Um, You're going to be fast with that, Vincent. Yeah, I, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Has anybody want to do it the data sheet way? The, the other thing that we could do, well, the data sheet way would probably be easiest to input. The other thing we could do that would help us is yeah. Miro. Is, you know, a Miro board means that we could be all at the same time, you know, putting that. Yeah. To, you know, rearranging them. Um, Vincent, does Graph Commons do collaborative or not? Um, sorry, what was that, Pete? Uh, does uh, Graph Commons do collaborative editing like Miro or not? Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm about to find out. Um, Maybe that the share button up there. Share Graph. Yes, but you guys probably need to create an account. Um, so does anyone want to create a Graph Commons account and then uh, have me invite them? I think Michael made a good point about doing it in the, in a data grid format instead. Um, it might be faster just to, if we were just throwing up names, it might be faster just to type them into, into the data cells instead of drawing them out. I think it would be faster. Yeah, for me, it would probably be faster to enter things into Airtable. Yeah. And then if we, and if we want to change the schema, I could do that like in real time in Airtable pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Let's do that. And and yeah, so I like the idea of mapping the like um, ethical tech. And I also think we should map the, uh, I think we should have fat edges between the kind of organizations that are in this and the, you know, uh, sovereigns in this call. So yep. because one thing is like when somebody new comes into OGM and they're like, how is everything connected? Like, I want there to be a strong enough, like, like we know the relationship somewhat between these different things so that um, I think we're probably gonna have a lot looser connections with like, how are we related to the CTA? It's like, we know of them or <laughs> we're hoping to work with them, but um, we're gonna probably have a lot more rich data about the, the kind of closer, like what are the, what is the first ring around flotilla and us and then like the, the rings after that are going to be more focused on the um the node than the relationship or the edge yep um so yeah are you guys okay with starting with like the kind of current organizations that we represent or or can kind of speak for pretty comfortably yeah. i think so just out of curiosity, on the map itself, if you hover over the lines, is it possible to add a descriptor to the, I know that the thickness of the line dictates the level of connection, but like say if, say if Trove and Factor are working on a project collaboratively, could we have that as part of the description on the line, if you hover on the line, just out of curiosity? So yes, the, that's in the settings. The lines can have, uh, you can show it at all times, I believe. Uh, let's let's go to the settings. So right now you're using edge type for that, right? Um, I think. Give me one sec. Sorry, it doesn't does need to be done now. I was just curious. I, I just thought that could be a helpful way for people coming in to to check out what what work's being done. And it's yeah, also there's... useful for you know, yeah. I mean, it is part of obviously that you get in that 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 situation right there is is great or you know are collaborating on or yeah yeah exactly that yeah so you could have other so right now the main the like required fields are like who's it going to who's it going from and then the like the, the description of the relationship between the two and then the weight, but you can also add other fields too. So I think you could add like, uh, yeah, you could add any property to the to the relationship. So we can add like a, a number score for how well that they're connected, or we can, yeah, we can add a, a like a, a paragraph text to like write a summary of how the two are related. 
Um, and so, how about like a project name or a project description, project name? Yeah, yeah. Um, we could do that. Yeah, so we can we can change we can add more information to the edges. Right now, when you hover over the, the um, edge, it shows the description, like the main descriptor. Um, and I think you could have those showing at all times. I turned it on the other day, so I need to find the setting. But yeah, I think I think the other thing is if we get the data in here in Airtable and we realize Graph Commons has this one thing that we can't do, th this same data could be imported into Kumu or some other software and like do, yeah, we can do the same thing in, in like four or five different tools. Sounds very cool. Um, let's start rattling off uh, organizations. Okay, and, cool. And or individuals maybe. So are we are we gonna are we gonna rattle and and make Vincent scribe or are we? Doing... I think that's what we're doing. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, Airtable is collaborative too, but I, it's going to be easier if, if we single stream through Vincent's capable brain and fingers. Yeah. Okay, so right now I have OGM, Kikolab, Flotilla, Catalyst, and Factor. Um, am I missing any other ones? Uh, for massive right human intelligence. Yes. Uh, project or just? I think not. Check. Sometimes okay. I, I'd say project at the end, but it's the name is settling down on just MHI. Oh, yes. uh, so then there's CTA. And then, you know, I, it, it struck me that um, uh, murmurations, which you guys are aware of, and and is part of collaborative tech alliance you know that that's a good example of something where we discover in in our collaboration and in our mapping that there are relationships that we didn't know existed that do um, so murmurations oh, is another one yeah also michael to your point earlier just just not not that we need to do it now but if if organizations do have a specific point person that would be the point of contact if you're interested in talking to them, not that we would have the whole directory, but maybe that's a field we could talk about yeah. adding. As, I mean, yeah. actually, the CTA um, that fill that CTA. Um, well, I mean, we could just rattle off a few. Um, I was just thinking about that CTA list. That, that oh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pull um, but I would mention true.net and, um, uh, sorry, it's TRU, not, not TRUE. Okay. Sure. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. I would add things like, uh, EFF or yeah. C. There's uh, the the, um, the Center for Humane Technology. Um, I'm thinking another one. Uh, there's it's kind of like CSPR or something. Um, Uh, there's uh, computer professionals for social responsibility. <laughs> Can I leave that as an acronym <laughs> for now? Um, yeah. uh, okay. It's uh, CPSR. Okay. Um, so I think I think with these fourteen, maybe we can start uh, adding a bit more of the the type. Um, so, so I have types for, 
um, OGM KikoLab Catalyst. Um, and then for Flotilla, I put Network. Does that seem like an apt description for the type of organization? Yeah. Um, yeah. How would you describe Factor, Michael? I mean, as you mean, plat outside of platform or yeah, or platform, or, or do you want, do you want company? I guess company, um, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess that's entity wise, that's, that's the right thing to use. Um, Pete, for, for massive human intelligence, would it be a... It, it might be platform, I don't know. We could always change it. And is it going to be a company or a nonprofit or a... Uh, uh, <laughs> um, yeah. I don't think I have I mean, another. I mean, can we put, you know, company, carrot, co-op? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a guild for now <laughs> no, no no guilds we, we, we can't use that language anymore <laughs> wait why uh, did i just trigger someone <laughs> no 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 it was a, it was a big conversation we had in the uh in the stewards call actually um oh, around the, the historical baggage around the term guild it's, so we're going with, i think we're going with circles for now Okay. Sounds good. I have a lot of people that swear by the word, so. Um, so I'm going to put CTA as an alliance and murmurations, I would also say is a, I don't think, I think they're a nonprofit, right? Or they're just, um, they're not even probably incorporated. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, it could be like a collective or a. Um, yeah, collective. Or I mean, yeah, it's a loose association, maybe. I don't know if association means stronger than that. And and Hilo would be in there too, which is well, I'm not to add another one, but you know they're um, a company. They're a for-profit owned by a a nonprofit um, collective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. It is. Um, it is. Sorry, it doesn't. So I just added Turin uh, Collective and Hilo. Um, is I guess True.net is also a company? True.net is a company. Um, an interesting thing to try and figure out how to map is that True.net um, utilizes um, or has a relationship to JLink which is a, I don't know if you'd call it a protocol, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a company that, that other people can use JLink also. Um, so that, that's a useful relationship. And, and JLink is something that other people in the CTA, including Factor, are, are thinking about as a possible, um, you know, interoperability help. I think it's J Link with a C. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. Thanks. Yeah, I put a question mark because I wasn't sure. <laughs> um, that that might be a subsidiary of True. I'm not sure. Again, this is getting more complicated than it needs to be. But I'm not. Well, sure. I mean, well, that's that's exactly what we're going to be doing. So, I mean, we yeah. could I could start adding in some uh, relationships. So yeah, we could do like, for example, um, Grand Collective. Um, Own Silo. So yeah, I would do as owner of Hilo. Um, and then you said JLink is uh, owned by TrueNet, I, I would imagine. 
It's, it, I mean, JLink predates True.net. Um, I mean, True.net is sort of an outgrowth of JLink. I'd have to check to see what their actual relationship is. I mean, it involves some of the same principles, um, you know, individuals, but uh, I don't know what, you know, TrueNet is uses the JLink protocol. J the JLink protocol can be used by people other than True True.net. Um, I'll, I'll have to, <laughs> I'll have to get back to you on that. Maybe I can. So yeah, we could add multiple relationship types as well. But so for now, I just put TrueNet uses yeah. JLink. Um, and while I have these here, so OGM um, and Kiko Lab, I have related to. Um, I'm wondering um, involved partner um, supports. Um, contributes to is related to an okay relationship there. Maybe, I don't know if we're speaking on behalf of <laughs> uh, Charles and Lauren aren't here. Lauren's here. Lauren's here. Lauren, are you there? Yeah, what? Um, we're doing a we're, we're trying to pick the edges, the relationship between Kiko Lab and Flotilla and Kiko Lab and OGM. Any thoughts on how to describe that relationship? What are the choices? <laughs> well, if it's a choice isn't happy, we could make our own. But right now, the ones that seem to make sense are um, partner of, um, supporter of, or related to. Uh, can I see the? Or we could make our own. Okay, so it's partner of. Partner or Supports related or. Or related, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Very changeable. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, we should, I'm, I'm sure all of these are ones that we're going to want to think about, you know, and, and will change over time. I mean, related to is one we can, we can all use as we figure out <laughs> how to play. Yeah. I mean, it certainly feels in my heart more like related to than partner of. Yeah, related to might be a, might be a good default kind of placeholder, and just it's, generally for. It's almost content free though. Yeah. Um, so there's like works with or um, has co connections to or. Also, Lauren, you and you and Charles came up in our CTA meeting this week. Uh, Kiala and Naomi uh, were mentioning some some work they were doing with you. Oh yeah. So I would um, it, do you have as a, a thing a formal bridge? Because we're trying to develop some formal bridges with organizations. Now I do. <laughs> well, so like. But yeah, beyond, so what is the formal bridge, right? I, is I wonder it, if formal bridge is different from partnership. It is different than partnership. I think each one of these, yeah, would need to be defined, but I also think good enough works for now. We could always change it. We could always make the terms more clear, but, uh, I, I, for now, put related to and supports. So I put OGM is related to Kiko Lab, and I put OGM supports Kiko Lab. Does it? Or shares members with, or uh, I added two other ones that you mentioned, has connections to, has connections to. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, and then between Flotilla and, and Kiko Lab, or Kiko Lab and Flotilla, whichever direction we want to make it. I, one, one way to say it is Kiko Lab is a member of Flotilla. So Flotilla still kind of seems like an association to me, almost like a trade association. So then we could probably duplicate that um, that relationship. So so who's a member of Flotilla? We would probably just add all the different sovereigns here that are here. And Lauren, this, I mean, we probably, I know we won't get to all of ours either, but this is, seems like a place where, you know, Kiko Labs relationships with, um, with other entities, like um, some of the stuff that um, you guys are, are doing um, that manifests on Clubhouse. Mm -hmm. um, um, I'm forgetting the name of the, the social innovators um, group that, that Systems innovators, I think. Yep. Vincent. <laughs> I also. Which, which Vincent, I mean, right. And then there's, yeah. So, I mean, all that kind of stuff seems like, okay, that all maps, you know, where this one is participating in that. And, you know, we'll, we'll get to that, I'm sure, but um, be cool. Yeah. So, I just added systems innovators. And um, so I think the relationship, I could speak on behalf of, so for systems innovators, I would say the relationship, because it's kind of a club, um, I would say is either member of or involved partner, kind of like there's a lot of different groups that kind of come and talk at systems innovators. Um, so it could be enables. Because yeah, we're, we're trying to kind of support and connect different initiatives through conversation. Um, so it could be like systems innovators enables, you know, Kiko Lab or systems innovators enables Trove. Vincent, did I see that there was an edge, edge type in there that was weakens? <laughs> Yes. I think that's awesome. What is it? What is it? <laughs> when, when you use that? Does, does anyone want to speak up? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can give you an example. Uh, Facebook weakens uh, the comments. <laughs> okay, I got you. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, and then I guess, so I can I can put in like, so Catalyst. So the relationship between Catalyst and Trove is um, basically Catalyst is the owner of Trove or really steward, but I guess, I don't know if I actually have that. Um, sponsor of, I would actually, probably actually just make one for stewards. So doing these edges makes me think that um, if we're putting up like a, a JSON data structure of, you know, if a sovereign is putting up a, a JSON data structure of its stuff, we'd also want to include edges like these. So then that makes me think that you need a unique identifier for each, um, for each organization. And for a lot of them, it's going to be a URL. Um, 
that there are going to be organizations that don't have a URL. And so then we're going to have to figure out how to make a unique identifier for, for them. I mean, we could do, not that this is the only way to do it, but we could do a, um, a kind of stock symbol of sorts, not an actual stock symbol, but some sort of abbreviated yeah. name of, of the organization. Um, you, you, we, we would need to figure out how to do distributed ID, right? Yeah. Like, where's the registry that you register the stock symbol or the, the ID of? So DNS is really good for that, but not everybody's in DNS. Also, Peter, are you saying with that directory that we'd have a common, uh, like a shared resource of like language and definition that used by? Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that would be very helpful. Vincent, um, we have a, a shit ton, for lack of a better term, of um, people and entities and organizations that could go on to this list if if we had access to this and you know not that they all have to be mapped i mean this might be all we're mapping for now but it would be really useful to to um you know cooperatively um generate this list <clears throat> yeah we yeah can, definitely. We can do something we could also do something in google sheets that you then you know, import to here, we could just follow this, this format. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we can also collaborate in the doc. Like I have this open as well. I can, I can edit it the same way. I think that Vint is right now, if I want to. I think. Yeah, the, the air table is collaborative and that air table is gonna end up being synced to a Google sheet. So I could also share the Google sheet with you guys if you wanna edit that directly. Um, the reason why, I prefer Airtable over Sheets. It's like, I mean, you see the way that I was doing like the linking where you can just pick from a drop down and then really easily create new, um, like, you know, relationship types or create a new one. Um, and then also we could then sync this to multiple different tools. So we could do, uh, we could do both. We could always take the data out of Sheets. Um, but it would just, I think after this call, we should just kind of, uh, make it known to each other which who's editing what that way if kind of like all right if we're going to import 100 rows of data into the google sheets we have to let's like you know then also import it into the air table or vice versa um i was just thinking that um that you might want to be or we might want to be a little fussier with the air table um incarnation of this and the google sheets might be a place for say Judith to enter, you know, an organization that should be on here that she knows about, you know, I mean, just could, the, could the low, air low table. technical lift. What? Yeah. Airtable form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We could yeah. create a form. Okay. And, 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 and part, part of, um, part of like the basic of like making a connection, um, could, could also be done on Trove eventually, but for now, it's actually just way easier to do this kind of manually. Uh, and it's way faster and we're going to be more like nimble to be able to change things. So um, I, I don't think it's, sure. but yeah, if we want, if we need to make an interface that makes it like really easy to do these maps, then that could be done. I think, yeah, I think for now having an Airtable form or just manually like importing data is not going to be too hard. Um, the, the other thing is there's actually some existing maps and data sets of like the technology space, um, which we might also want to look at. I think it, it's, I think it's going to be most helpful for us to make a map that, like I said, is having like really rich connections. Um, and it's like a somewhat accurate representation of the truth in the current state of the world. So that way we can, we like people who like come into flotilla can like quite easily look at the map for a few minutes and see what's what and also have like an actionable direction to like get pointed to certain people or certain websites so i think adding in the websites will be um really helpful and then i think um i think we could start to add in that other data but i almost feel like having a smaller map to start with and then maybe keeping that one separate and we keep that one like up to date 
um, and then have a separate map for like the whole map that might have a hundred or a thousand nodes. Um, how does that feel to you guys? I, um, I definitely the smaller map makes sense. Um, I, I would like to figure out a way that we can, that, that we can make different smaller maps, I guess. Um, kind of on demand. I think um, just the idea that, that we are collaboratively creating and, and importing and, you know, just aggregating a directory um, not all of which is going to immediately be on one map, you know, and maybe we're starting with one map and moving toward multiple views on maps. And the ultimate goal would be that you could have everything in the directory mapped and viewable from any point in there, but, you know, but not have, not have the ability to amass a directory be constrained by how much we want to map right now. If that makes sense. Maybe not. <laughs> it kind of does. I, right. I, I can almost imagine it's, it's, it's almost like I want to be able to curate a map or, you know, collectively, like there should be a flotilla curated map. So then it's kind of like for everything in the database, if there's another column that is the curator um, of, you know, this is in a map that's curated by Flotilla. This is in a map curated by Factor. This is in a map curated by Pete or Laura. Yeah. That makes sense. Could, could we, do we yeah, want that's to a great idea. Oh, sorry, Vince. Um, Go ahead. I, I, was I was just saying that's a good idea. I was just wondering, do we want to decide what slices and views we want outside of perspective? I'm thinking like, I know these are all digital tools and tech tools, but maybe if they have a certain focus, like I know we were talking about the UN development goals, but if there's people that are focused on those, those different things or different topics, having a field that you can kind of just filter down on these people are working on the ecosystem or climate change. These people are working on digital well-being, um, things like that. We don't do it right now, but I'm, I'm just thinking what kind of views. Vince, Vincent's got those in tags right now. Okay. He's got a pretty good. Yeah, it seems like tags would be a nice way to approach that. And that would address what, you know, Judy was asking, like, I just want to. Right. And, and I mean, yeah. that, that, that's an example of that, what in the short run in a just listed directory would be easy to boil down to, you know, stuff by tags, even if nobody's mapped those things. So it seems really right. useful for our group. Yeah. Uh, I've got to leave just before the half. Um, uh, so maybe let's do some uh, wrap up stuff. Uh, so next steps is another call like this next week. Um, I think we want to pick a different time uh, because not everybody can make this time. So maybe the way to do that is with a poll. Um, I used to use Doodle and now there's a new thing that I started to look at because Doodle is getting junky. Um, uh does a poll sound like a good idea or is that crazy should we kind of pick a, a time right now that's not so till a friday time with the folks on this call well if we're trying to pick a time that people who couldn't make this call can make maybe we should do it in a in a poll yeah yeah just so we can include them yeah i mean doodle's fine with me or whatever yeah, maybe doodle. Um, and maybe two days, like maybe uh, Wednesday or Friday, and kind of see how it how it ends up. Um, um, yeah, we could do that. Um, I also know there were some people that couldn't make today that can make next week. So Charles and time. Jerry. Yeah. Yeah, Charles and Jerry can both be here next week. At this time. So maybe we should do both. Um, is that crazy or have a, oh, yeah. have another one as a regular flotilla Friday time, but then also have another one to pick up other people. Uh, I mean, I mean, we can have it as a placeholder and if it works for people, keep it Enough and people. if not, maybe change it. Yeah. Um, that's a good idea. Um, I'll, I'll send out an invite kind of like I did, uh, yesterday, but 
with more notice this time. <laughs> um, and then Vincent, I'm wondering uh, if you've got. So I'm 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 super excited about the um, the syndication aggregation route for this information, and part of that is just the schema defining the schema. And so I wonder if you have some if it's easy for you to share kind of the schema that an organization fits into in Trove. Yeah, so I think um, what I can do is I could sync. So right now what I have is I have the different um, communities synced into here. So I could into this Airtable sync the locations, the types, and the topics. Actually, no types. So yeah, the, the basic schema to answer your question in like 30 seconds is um, what type of group is this? Um, so this is what we were already doing, like group, guild, um, mutual aid group, movement platform. And then uh, what topics? And I have like main topic and then subtopics. Um, and then locations that this the group serves. And then um, the other main one is the constituents that the group serves. Um, so those are the main those are the main categories. So I could sync those into this Airtable base if you guys want to like yeah. explore that more. I, I would like that. How about do you have how about things like description and URL and yeah, so that's already in here. So I have um, name, gotcha. description, URL, and those are pretty standard. Um, and I actually just copied and pasted what we have so far into the, the sheet here. So actually, we might be able to see what we have currently. Um, if I refresh this, maybe. Um, let's see. Sweet. So we have a map. Super cool. Um, so I'm going to share this. So if anyone wants to play around with it, um, let's see. Link. That's awesome. Also, Vince, I feel like you're taking a lot of work here. If there's any way I can support it all or we can support it all, just let me know. I'd be happy to. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, we can, we can definitely do a lot of inputting or, uh, you know, if, if that's helpful, I mean, just in terms of, um, entities and relationships and do as much as we can on that. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and yeah, and this, um, I think it would be really cool. So we have, um, we just talked about the different perspectives, um, and it would also be really cool to have like, so like curator or perspective being like the group, but then also we could have a field for like the individual that like added that entry. So we can almost have a lead leaderboard of, of who are the, the power mappers. So I think that would be a really cool thing too. And then, you know, if we end up uh, making a medium or if we end up doing a medium article about the land about the space and then posting a map and then we end up you know making some money we could divvy it up between the contributors of the map sounds awesome um is this a good place to wrap or do, or do people want to stay on and i should uh, uh get somebody else to start the recording or, um... i have to run too yeah i think this is a good good place to wrap very great, very interesting stuff so far. I have to say, this is exciting. Yeah, very cool and uh, awesome job, Vincent, as always. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, it's uh, it's cool to to actually see yeah a map. Oh, we had a working map, guys. See, we did it. <laughs> very cool. Um, looks like you had a lot of homework uh, driving all that productivity.
Yeah, quite a bit. Not all of it today. Um, some of it over the last few weeks and months, uh, trying to do, you know, to do this mapping in a more collaborative way and learning through a lot of failures on ways to not do it. But <laughs> I'm really uh, excited about kind of the collective progress we've made in mapping. So that's really cool. Um, thanks all. Let's do it again next week. Cheers. Awesome. See you guys soon. Thank <laughs> you.